Duplicate entry is a huge waste of money and resources. Don't enter order and invoice details in multiple places. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to automatically create invoices in Xero from Airtable. Check it out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our website, interdevsolutions.com, or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. I have my order management system created in Airtable. You can do this process in a lot of different database or no code based tools. Even if you have your information in Google Sheets, Smart Suite, or a lot of the other tools that are available out there, the process will be very similar. But I have mine created in Airtable. If you want to build one in Airtable and don't have an account already, there is a link in the description below. We will also be using make.com to uh, build out this integration. If you do not have a make account already, there's a link in the description below for that as well. Getting started, we have our order management demo set up. We have an orders table, order items or line items that link back to the orders. Then we have customers and of course our products. We're going to jump right into make and we're going to integrate with Zero, being our accounting and invoicing platform. If you do not have a Make account already, you could go to make.com or there's a link in the description below. Once you have an account set up, go ahead, create a new scenario, and we're going to have to authenticate and connect our accounts with Airtable and Zero. First thing to do that, what we want to do is go ahead and click this Add New Module icon. At the end, we're going to create a webhook button to initiate the scenario. But to get started, we are just going to use the Airtable uh, module and we're going to use a get a record and we're just going to pass in a static record for the time being. If we click get a record, there's a few connection accounts, but I want to go in and add a new one. So we can click add connection type. We'll select the auth option. We can label this whatever you want. I'm just going to call this demo order management, and then we can click save and it will bring up a new menu for us. I'm already logged into Airtable. So I can go in here and click add a base and find the base we want to use, which is order management demo, and then in brackets zero, you can select it and then we can grant access. And now that authentication is only going to link to this individual base rather than an entire workspace or all of my bases that I have access to. We'll grant access and later on, we will likely have to update the integration because this is going to be a read only because we're just getting a record. Once we go ahead and update the record, we will have to allow more permissions. Now we can go into the base. There's only one available and it will find the tables for us here in a moment. We can select tables and we want to start with an order. And as I mentioned, we're just going to pass in a static order to get started. I'll go back to Airtable. And before we continue and make, I want to just go ahead and add in all of the additional fields that we will need here in Airtable so that we can easily get the record ID of our orders. We're just going to create a new formula field. I'll label it record ID, and we're going to pass in the function record ID. And now it's displaying the record IDs for us. I'm going to grab the first order, copy that, go back into make and pass that in and hit OK. We'll go back into Airtable and add in our additional fields that we need. This orders table is going to represent our invoices as well. I'll go in, hit this plus icon, and we're going to go zero invoice ID that once we create the invoice in zero automatically, we can pass in the ID as a reference back into Airtable. This can just be a single line text field. I'll go in and add another one. And this is going to be zero invoice number. The ID is going to be a long string of text that is unique within the zero system. And then the invoice number is going to be something that's a little more legible and displays on the actual invoice. This one, we'll just also use a single line text field. And that's all we need to add in the orders table. We'll go into customers. We'll add in another field and we can call this zero customer ID or in zero, they call it contact. So you could also call it zero contact ID. 
and we will just use a single line text field here as well. Now we can continue back and make, and we can click this little add another module icon. And from here, we're going to click this air table button and we're going to get another record. We want to select our order management demo base. And this time we are going to get the customer's record and it's going to be passed in from here. And if I hover it, you can see that it flashes there in the background on the left. And what I want to do here is go down to customers. I can hit this little button and I can hit the one here and it's going to pass us the customer record ID and good practice. If I right click, I can rename this module. This one's going to be get order. And this one is going to be get customer. The reason for this is you'll see in a moment when we go to create the actual invoice, we have to pass in the contact or the customer ID that's unique within zero. And that will be stored as we just created in the customer's table. Now, at the end of this video, I will show you the full scenario that I have already built out and I will just quickly go over creating and searching for contacts or customers on the latter half of the router. And I'll show you what that looks like at the end. But from here, the next thing that we want to do is add in an iterator and this right here, which I just mentioned, I'll show you, we would add in a router here. Basically what's going to happen is if the customer, the zero ID is found, it's going to go the first route and create the invoice for us using the found zero customer ID. But if it does not have that in Airtable, it's going to go a different route and it's first going to search for the customer by email and customer name. And if it's not found, it will create the new contact. And if it is found, it will just create the invoice using that found customer ID. But we're going to keep things a little bit more simple. We'll go add in this iterator here. And what we want to do is we will bring in the order items that is found here, and it's going to iterate through each order item. Now we can click this, add another module, another Airtable one, and it's going to be get a record. What we want to do is we're going to get the line item record or the order items record for each line item found within the given order. And that's what this iterator is doing here. Again, we'll find our base, we'll find our table, which is order items. And then the record is going to be from the iterator and we can click OK. Go in, rename it, call this get order items and we'll hit OK. And now we can add in an array and we're going to merge all of the order items that we have now found. The source module will be back to the iterator, the target structure. I'm going to hit OK here because we need to find or create that target structure, which is going to be create an invoice in zero. We'll search for zero, go down here, and we will use the create in the invoice module. I have already created a connection, but similar to what we did in Airtable, if you do not have the connection created already, go ahead, click add. It will bring up your zero account, or you'll have to log into your zero account and you can simply do the authentication. I'm just using the demo company. Now type, we're actually creating an invoice and not a bill. And the contact ID, as mentioned, is coming from the get a customer module. We'll click contact ID, find the get customer module, and we'll go down to the zero customer ID. We'll click map because what we're doing here is we're getting a new line item or multiple line items, and we're just going to pass in this array here and we will click OK. And I'll go back to the array aggregator. The target structure is going to be line items in that create an invoice that we just found. And here is the line items fields. We're gonna keep it pretty simple. I'm going to use the product name, which is a lookup field. The product name here is a lookup field. Otherwise it would just pass in the record ID here, but we want the actual text value. We can pass that in the quantity and unit amount. We'll just go in and select this item price here and everything else I believe is optional. Depending on your unique business, there's going to be different information that you need to pass in. Last step, 
I'm going to add another module that's going to be Airtable, and we are going to update a record. I'm going to choose my order management demo account that we just created. And as I said, we'll have to update connection permissions. We'll hit continue, select our base, and we'll grant access. We'll select our base, we'll select our table, which is orders and the record ID. If we hit collapse, all goes back to the very first ID or get order module that we created. And if we scroll down, here are the two fields that we created within the orders table, which are zero invoice ID and zero invoice number. From the invoice module that we're creating, we can pass in the invoice ID. And if we click and drag this invoice number, we can drop it into the invoice number field. Hit save. We can rename this to update order. I go into my order management system and go into customers. I do not have any customer IDs here. This is what I was referencing earlier that we will set up or I will show you the separate route that I have created that will search and or create new contacts or customers within zero and then update the information here back in contacts. But what I need to do because this is the customer that I'm creating the demo on. I already have them in zero. I just have to go get the customer ID and you can do that by going into zero, go contacts, select all contacts. The customer name is this tech innovators. I'll just search tech and you can see they have been found. I'll select them and then up in the URL, there is a ID that can be found and I will just copy that and paste that into zero. And you can see it looks like this long random string of characters. Now, if I go back into make, I should be able to run this once and it should work properly for us. We'll go ahead, give it a test. I'll click run once and you can see it went through, got our order, got our customer. And if I open this up, we can see that it found the zero customer ID that we just pasted in there. Goes to this iterator here, which is going to iterate through each order item that was found. There should be four line items on our invoice. And you can see that true here, but got four order items, aggregated the array, and then created the invoice here and updated it back in Airtable. If I go into Airtable quickly, go over to orders, we can see the zero invoice ID and the zero invoice number here that was created. And if I go back into zero, go into our business tab down to invoices and we'll be able to see this invoice 035 if i select it we can see the four line items that were added it gave us a description quantity a unit price and it automatically calculates the amount for us based on how you have your zero settings set up the tax will be different that's the simple version of this is creating the invoice assuming that you already have the zero customer ID created. And in just a moment, I will show you what the other option looks like that has the multiple routes that shows you how to create the contact or customer. But one last thing that I do want to do here, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I want to trigger this by a button. There's a lot of different ways that we could initiate or create this invoice, but I want to create a button. If I go in here, I'll search for the button field type. I'll label it create invoice and I'll just pass that in here. We can pick our color and it will be open a URL and we're going to use a URL formula. If we go back into make, I'll right click add a new module. We'll use a custom web hook. We're going to add a new web hook and just call this demo create new invoice. Again, you can label it whatever you want. We'll hit save. I'm going to copy the address to my clipboard, which is also found here. I'll hit OK and I will attach the webhook to the get an order. Now, what I want to do is go into this get order and I'll clear this out. And eventually I will have the webhook. Once we give it a test run, we will have a webhook value that we can get from the key value pair. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Back in the error table, we'll use a concatenate function. 
And within the quote, we will paste in our webhook URL, and then we're going to add a question mark so that we can add in a parameter. We'll just call this record and we'll add in an equals. And then on the outside of the quote, because we're using a concatenate function, we can pass in the record ID. I hit save and we can see if I go select the first order here or the order four, it creates and adds in our make URL or webhook URL. It's added in a question mark with a record. This is the key and then equals the record ID. If I hit cancel, we'll go into here. We'll just run this module once. If we click this button, it says accepted. We'll go into make and we can see it's passed in a value that has a record as a key and the record ID for that order. Now, if we click get orders, we can clear this out and we'll pass in this variable of record. This time when I hit run once, it will sit here and spin until we go in and click the button. Now, when I click run once, it's initiated and waiting for information to be passed. I can go in, create an invoice and go back into make, and we can see that it's created another invoice for us using the variable and record that we passed to it. Now, as I mentioned from the start, we have a little more complex or advanced scenario. The difference is we have the get order, get customer, and then this top route here matches our scenario. If, and if I zoom in, it's hard to see, I'll click the filter. If zero ID exists, we're looking at the condition being if the zero customer ID is found, then we're going to go this route that we'll have no problem creating a invoice and linking it to a contact or customer that already exists within zero. But this is where the router comes in. We'll split this route. If it is not found a zero ID does not exist on this customer ID, then we need to go a different path. And the first thing it's doing is it's searching for contacts. It's using a module that's been pre-built and we can go ahead and search for a contact. I'm just using a search term of looking for the company name or the email address. If it exists within zero, then we want to grab that zero customer ID. And if the customer is found, which we're using a filter here, we're going to go through basically the same process as up here. We're going to iterate through the line items. We're going to get each of the line item details. We're going to aggregate that to an array, and then we are going to create an invoice and we'll update the customer and order the update customer because it has found the contact. It's just going to add that uh, zero customer ID into Airtable, and then the other route, which is not found. We need to create a contact. We'll create a new contact in zero. And then same thing as the first step there, which is iterate the items, get all the order items, aggregate the array. We'll create the invoice and then based off of the contact that we just created, we will update that customer ID back in Airtable here. And that's the slightly more advanced and complicated version of it. But again, it's pretty simple. It's just duplicating this scenario here that we just created with a couple of extra modules in it being search for contacts and create a contact. That is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more tutorials in the future.